So the sitar uh, as an instrument has a long and cherished history. And thanks to the efforts of all these great masters that we have uh, spoken of, uh, the sitar has almost become an icon for Indian classical instrumental music. The sitar and the tabla are probably like if you see uh, many restaurants in the West also have the sitar as a logo. Or if you go to a place, any place which uh, is, is a music school, you will see either the sitar or sometimes you'll see a tanpura also or a tabla. So these are icons for our music. Um, I think, uh, uh, as I as I said earlier, it is still at a developmental uh, process, and I think it is our responsibility as students of music to continue with this developmental process and not to take uh, the versatility of this instrument for granted. Because although a lot may have been explored already, but I am pretty sure there are still some avenues left to explore. One just has to sit and think and ponder. Um, uh, about uh, how far you can push the envelope. Um, I think that process of, of discovery of, of the limitlessness of the instrument is also not a contrived process. It has to happen. I think uh, technique should not dictate content. It, is, it should be the other way around. Content should dictate technique. When I had to play the first time with uh, uh, some jazz musicians, I started figuring out how I could play chords or how I could play chromatic. So or if I were to play a solo on a set of chords. So this is a D minor. So say This is C major. This would be a B flat. How to try to modify and play through changes, play through chords. If your content is dictating, you will find the technique for it sooner or later. And this is one of uh, the things that I'm working on. Um, you know, I, I like, for instance, when you play a melody like Chick Corea Spain, which is. So there are uh, some melodies like he's got another melody called Got a Match, which is almost impossible to play on the sitar. So there are so much jumps which are happening. Even in Spain, some of the melodies. It's my constant effort to try to play through the harmonic changes to actually incorporate as much of harmony as I can uh, while being aware that the sitar is essentially an instrument which is suited to playing modal music where uh, the tonic is fixed and uh, you know when I create uh, uh, compositions uh, which are within like I created this uh, uh, composition which I called uh, the first train out. So you can see the harmony is constantly changing and I want to feel that change in my head. Even when I'm playing my classical music, I can see harmonies in a lot of ragas. And, and this is something that I intend to do some research on is I believe that Indian music also is harmonic in a very sophisticated uh, and sort of subtle way. It, it's just that the harmony is not in your face. It is somewhere in the background. So I think these are certain areas where I'm trying to work on. Uh, also, I'm trying to work, uh, you know, do some work in the in the field of, you know, in, in, sort of in the area of syncopation. Like as I demonstrated in Chick Corea's uh, Spain, uh, if you play the phrase slowly, So 
if you actually follow the beat, you'll see the entire thing is syncopated. And, uh, and I'm trying to find uh, sort of uh, connections between that and Carnatic music. I've been playing with a lot of the great Carnatic players. So I've been learning a little bit of Carnatic music, the, especially their, their uh, Tal Shastra, which is their, the way they look at rhythm. And I find a lot of similarities between that and syncopated jazz. So it is, I think uh, it, it goes, it, it broadens the horizons. When music is just music, when you sit on stage and make music, you don't think genre. And, and the effort of the, of the musician should be just to be in the moment and respond to what the moment is telling you. Uh, so I, I try, I think that is one of my, my uh, sort of efforts, uh, call it a contribution. I think contribution is a big word because you find that only at the end of your life. But, but one of my efforts is to actually try and live in the moment as much as possible and not carry the baggage of even the previous moment. Because then only you are free of genre, you are free of, uh, because all the knowledge that you've assimilated stays with you. So your response will be based on that knowledge. So you don't have to consciously say, okay, this is my talim, this is my gharana. You'll be free of all that in the moment. Because in the moment, you just have to spontaneously react to the music. 